Right, welcome back to another video. So we have this little forklift axle to sort out. And um, this is off a Chinese forklift apparently, so parts are not very easy to get for it. So as you can see, the thrust bearing has disintegrated and then, well, it's completely disappeared. So then the stub shaft has been running on here, which is like completely worn into it. Tube into there as well. Uh, it looks like someone's tried repairing it before with the bush. But, you know, the top hole is completely oval. The bottom, something's been wearing into there. Not quite sure what's been wearing into that. The other side doesn't look too bad. The bush has come out, or whatever's supposed to be in there has come out, but the hole doesn't look too bad. And the bottom, I think, is all right. But then all the steering joints are knackered. Luckily they're all right, the main pivots are all right, there's no wear on them, so that's good. So we'll start by removing this. I don't hold much hope of this pin coming out. Can't even see where the pin starts and finishes. So we'll take that out anyway, see if it'll come out. If not, we'll just cut through there with gas, lift it up and then cut through the bottom. So I've given that a bit of a warm up, it still didn't want to come undone, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm just going to chop it off there, lift it up, chop it off across the bottom, because that shaft is knackered anyway, so there's no point spending a lot of time trying to get it out. Might as well just chop it out. these bolts to undo and that um, right retaining bar whatever you want to call it will come out that pin will come out and then this one will come off a little bit of the pin I haven't got cut all the way through yet So that's the hub out and the kingpin out. You can see how much of that's been worn away. I think that might be fun trying to get that pin out of there. 
Most of them steering joints have got proper little right, rose joints in them. It looks like that's maybe what it's supposed to have as original for, for bushes. But I'm going to take the good, good side, well, I'm going to take the better side in bits now and see what I, you know, see what's what inside there. So I've given that pin a few whacks with a normal size hammer, but it doesn't seem like it wants to move, so I have to go on to the big hammer. Right, so I've given it a whack on the top with a bigger hammer, and you can see it has actually moved, so it's not seized in. So I just need to put, need to hold a punch on the top of there, so I don't bruise the top of the pin over, and then I can knock it out. As you can see in there, it does actually have proper little uh, like roller needle bearings. So that one's come out. Then it's had that thrust bearing. It sits over there like that as well. So that, I've just knocked that out of there. It's an old kind of bush or outer bearing case. So this is the only hole that I've got to go off because um, all others are knackered so if I knock this bearing out then at least I've got the size of that hole and I've got a bearing to measure and at least I've got something to go off so I'll see if I can get that out now Right, so I've got that out. So I've got the bottom hole cleaned out. It doesn't actually look too bad. There's a bit of damage there and it's rusty, but whether it'd be tight enough to hold a new bearing or not, I don't know. I'll have to find out. Let's say the top one's alright. Right, so I think with this side, with the dodgy side, so I think what I'm going to do is just chop these off completely, just gouge out around the welds, remove them, make some new ones that are slightly undersized, weld it all up, then I can put it on my radio arm drill and then ream through both of them back out to 40 mil, which is supposed to be for the bearings. Actually, before I do, start doing any gouging, I'm just going to take the steering ram out. There's only four bolts that hold it in and I'm not running any risk of damaging the rod then.
Right, so that's them chopped out. You know, clean up the grinder. So I'm going to make some new ones of these now, out of this round bar. Uh, the outside diameter needs turning down to about 65 mil, and then I'm going to drill through the middle with that 36 mil. And then when I've got them welded onto the axle, and I can, I'll put them in my radio arm drill and then ream them through, through them both to get them back to final diameter. Like I made a little bit of misjudgment there. I've not not quite drilled into it enough. Thought I was cutting in a long way with the uh, batting tool, so I just have to drill in a bit deeper and then it should drop off. I've got them cut off, just that one, because I hadn't drilled through it deep enough to start with, and then cut down the back of it. It's just left a bit in at the other end that I hasn't drilled through, so I'll just take that out with a die grinder. It's getting run through with the reamer anyway, so it 
No, it won't matter. I'll just remove most of it. Right, so I've got them tacked on there. I'll put some weld down the end first and then weld all, all the way around it. I'll leave that box section on and then that'll help to keep it in line. Right, so I've got them welded up and um, there's two welds in there, there's a smaller one underneath and a fatter one over the top. So we can remove this box section now and then I'll take it over to the radial arm and get it set up ready to run the reamer through it. Right, so it's fastened down on the radial arm drill now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through with two reamers. I'm going to go through with a 38 first and then through with a 40. The reason I'm going to do that is because if you see reamers don't have much of a leading edge and if I'd, if I'd drilled that through with say 39mm and then wanted to go through with a 40mm if it, if it wasn't quite straight like it'd go through the top one alright but then if it wasn't quite straight when it got to the bottom one and it was slightly off like that I'd only have like half a mil of tolerance and then it'd end up taking more out of one side of the hole and nothing out the other and then you end up with a oval shaped hole so if I do that first with a 38 and then that's got a bit more of a leading edge on it go through the 38 and it gives me an extra well it gives me two mil two mil of tolerance then because I've, I've done it before where you've gone through with a reamer and then you've got to the bottom hole and you haven't given yourself enough tolerance like I say and you end up having to build the hole back up again and then go back through it again so this way it just ensures that you have a little bit more to play with you'll see what I mean anyway when I, when I get doing it so that's what I was meaning before when I was saying about um, the reamer not having enough tolerance you can see it's cutting there but it's not taking anything out at that side it's taking a little bit out there then from there to there it's not taking anything out so if I'd have gone straight through with a 40mm reamer I'd have, uh, I'd have been in trouble now I've had to have a bit of a reshim I just sat it straight on the deck before thinking thinking that would be alright but it wasn't um, I've tested it with my angle gauge on, the, on that shaft and 
with a straight edge down through the pivot, through the, like, the other side. And I've set it so it's 90 degrees now, and before it was a little bit out, which I should have checked that to start with, but anyway, I didn't do. So yeah, um, that's why I go through with a smaller reamer first and then through with a proper size reamer. So I realised doing this job that the uh, the cutting fluid is making the chips stick together and it bungs the reamer up, that's why I have to keep having a go and then stopping. But since then I've realised that compressed air is better because it blows the chips out rather than makes them all stick together. Right, so that's that bit done, that's them reamed out to 40 mil. So I'm just on taking this one out bit of stub shaft, one out bit of uh, kingpin out of this stub shaft uh, to warm it up to get the grub screw out. And I've just given it a smack with hammer and it's starting to move, so it uh, should come out not too bad. So I've got that ground down, cleaned up. I'm going to have to build it up a weld now because it's, it's worn quite a lot off it. Um, I'm going to do it with a MIG. If you watched one of my other videos, you'll have seen I did it with a TIG, but this is a lot more to build up, so I'm going to use a MIG. And then I'll put it in the milling machine and mill it back, mill it back flat again. That bit doesn't really matter. I'm not going to worry about that because it's still the run, steel runs on there, but it's not, you know, it's not doing any harm. Right, so to machine this back flat, I was going to do it in the mill, but the bottom surface is a little bit worn as well, so it's not square with the um, with the kingpin. So what I've done is put the old kingpin in the chuck, in the lathe, I've indicated that in. So now I'm going to put the spindle, or the stub shaft, onto the old kingpin, then use a grub screw to lock it on. And then I can gently machine that surface back down and then I know that it'll be um, true with the, you know, with a hole through the middle. Right, so I've got that turned down the lathe. I'll just tickle them bits off the grinder, just where I couldn't couldn't quite reach down into them with a tool before it was touching on there. So it's a couple of weeks later now, and we've finally got some parts to put it back together. So we've got new bearings to go in there. There's new thrust bearings. Um, there's new little joints for steering. There's new pins for the steering. There's new seals. Yeah, there's all sorts of new bits so we'll uh, put it back together now hopefully it'll be plain sailing putting it back together
tuck the bottom one in, there's a seal underneath and an o-ring on top. According to the drawings on the top one, all there is is a bearing, there's no seals on the top one. Um, so whether I see if I can find some seals, I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll press the bearing in. Right, so saying that these bearings didn't have any seals uh, on the parts list, it didn't show any seals. So what I've got is some of these like, scraper seals, same as what the scent, same as what was on the part list for the bottom seal. You can see it. So I'm going to put them in top and bottom. Better than having no seals. And I've I've glued the bearings in, even though they're a tight fit. I've glued them in because there's nothing else that holds them in. There's no circlips or anything. So bit of glue to help them stay in then we'll press them in so now I've got them seals pressed in I can put the stub shaft back in so the stub shaft to go in and there's this thrust washer then there's like a collar in the middle that I've just pressed in pressed into that and the cover that goes over that and then there's some shims as well so we'll uh, we'll put that back in I think I remember put them shims in the bottom actually. Right, so we've got both stub shafts in now, they're nice. 
Um, I've just got some new joints to put in the end of the steering ram, but I sent the wrong size ball joint for some reason. There's supposed to be four that size, and I sent three that size and one, which is too big. So obviously it's been put back in the wrong uh, container or something, and I picked up the wrong one. But anyway, we we'll, that one doesn't look too bad, so we'll just replace this one for now, and then we can put it back together, and then when the new one comes customer can uh, can change it if need be and these are uh, these link arms that go between the steering ram and onto there I've I welded up the holes and then re-drilled them and reamed them out back 16 mil so that the, the pin is a nice tight fit they were a bit they were worn before they were a bit sloppy so right so that's a new joint in there so I can't change that one yet because I haven't got one the right size um, everything's greased, everything accepts grease, so we can put the steering ram back into the axle now. Right, so that's it all back together now. Um, the, the wheel bearing's not great and the seal is not very good in the back the hub, which I didn't realise until I was putting it back together. So I'd, I'd, I've advised the customer to put a new seal and wheel bearing in it. So yeah, that's that job done. So it's funny how I've never done one of these before. And then I've, now I've done two within the last two months. It's just how it works out sometimes for some reason. So if you're interested, I've set up a snowball engineering Instagram account where I'm putting pictures of like my past jobs on and some of the present jobs and um, a bit behind the scenes of the YouTube so yeah if you want to see that go and check out snowball engineering on Instagram and I'm on with a little line boring job in the background which there'll be a video of shortly so yeah thanks for watching hope you enjoy the video